Hello and welcome back to At Home with the Royal Butler. And I should say they're all dashing because here we've also got Shumba, which will obviously make quite a few of you happy because I think you enjoy seeing Shumba when he makes his rare public appearances. Can I just say a huge thank you for all the likes and comments on the last At Home with the Royal Butler, which was my little, my little home in Scotland, my little house in Ely that I gave you a tour of and the local town. And I think quite a few of you enjoyed that. So therefore, I thought it'd be fun to do another one, but I'm now back in England, I'm at my home in the Cotswolds, and I thought it'd be quite fun to do one from here. And I should mention what I love about this area, the Cotswolds, I mean, some of you will know it, it's a beautiful part of the country, but it's great for me because it's easy to get to Blenheim Palace, Thornley Castle, and London, which is the, the venues or the places that I normally travel for my work. So for today's At Home with the Royal Butler, I've got the tea set that normally sits behind me because quite a few of you have been asking me questions about it. So I thought, what a fantastic thing to actually let you see it and to hopefully answer some of the questions. The first thing I'm going to say is it's not a complete set because I have the teapot, the sugar basin and the milk jug, which is a set, and I got them in Scotland in a little junk shop, if I can say that, for about £25. Uh, the same goes with the other two pots, but they were found in England. In fact, not too far from where I live uh, at the moment. And this I use for hot water and coffee. And then this pot, just here, I use for my hot water as well. I think she was obviously doing a quick inspection to make sure they're up to standard, which is fantastic. So, I don't believe in spending a huge amount of money for these kind of items when you can find them for relatively good prices. So for those of you asking, uh, it is worth having a little hunt, having a little look around your charity shops, junk shops, car boots, because you never know what you might find. In fact, a lot of items in my home are from those very places. And we're talking about everything from silver, uh, even pieces of gold, even bits of gold and glassware and crockery and cutlery. And I'm always happy to show all this to you and talk to you about where I found it and the history and what I use it for, if that is of interest. I can always I can always do that for you. But again, in the comments, let me know what you'd like to see. I'm now going to show you how I take care or clean my silver. This is silver, I should mention. It's silver plated, but nevertheless, I still clean it as I would with solid pieces of silver. And I'm going to demonstrate this in my kitchen, probably without the assistance of the Royal Dachshund. Uh, I don't think he'll reach up to the sink, but I'm sure he'll be there watching. And hopefully I'll give you a few ideas or tips as to the best way to clean your silver. Okay, so here is the tray that sits behind me with my silver tea items. And I'm going to remove these to the kitchen so that I'm ready to begin cleaning them. I should mention that the tray that these all sit on was actually a gift from the Duke and Duchess of Bedford a few years ago, and I absolutely love this. In fact, it's one of my most treasured items. I think before I begin, I should do a very quick clothes change so that I'm dressed appropriately. Ah yes, much better. Don't you agree? Right, time to go to the kitchen, fill my sink up with some warm water and a little drop of fairy liquid. And then here I have my silver dip, which is what I apply to the silver first. And then we've got the silver foam or the silver polish. Now, I do recommend that if you've got sensitive skin to put on some rubber gloves because the silver dip can actually have a bit of a reaction with your skin. So it's just a bit of a, a safety precaution, I would say. And the first thing I'm gonna do is apply the silver dip all over the teapot, as you can see here. And for any tricky little areas, you can always use a toothbrush, which is ideal for getting into those more tricky areas. Then I'm going to put the teapot under the cold water tap because this is an excellent way to get rid of the silver dip and it also kills off the silver dip which was a tip given to me a few years ago by a jewellers in London. Then I'm going to apply the silver foam as you see here and once again for any tricky areas you can use your toothbrush. 
Then I'm going to dip it into that warm soapy water to try to get rid of most of the silver foam. But of course, then I'm going to put it under the hot water tap, which will make sure that there is none of the silver dip or the silver polish left on the teapot. And then I'll leave it to dry for a few seconds before getting my glass cloth and giving it a good buff up. And then I will continue this process with the rest of the items. But of course, I'm a very fast butler, as you can see, and I don't like to waste time. So as I said, I will now continue to get the rest of the items quickly done. Did I mention this can be quite therapeutic? Then I put all the items onto a glass cloth, as you can see here, to make sure that I catch any fennel drips before putting them back into place. And there we go. Hopefully that has given you a few ideas and look how beautifully clean this set now is. It looks stunning. It probably doesn't look that much different because it normally is clean. I do try to clean it every couple of months, uh, which I think is quite important because it's always out on display. I do use it quite a lot. I use it when I have friends come for tea. I use it even for myself sometimes when I have tea. And as I said, it's always on display so people can actually see it. Uh, and it's one of my favourite tea sets. And it's not just because part of it is from Scotland. Can I just quickly say a huge thank you, as always, for all the likes, the comments, the, the new subscribers. Uh, I'm, I'm very aware that quite a few people have started following me and, and or subscribed to the channel, and that means a lot to me. So thank you so much. And please keep commenting. You know I do try to respond to all your comments. I love your ideas. I love your comments. You're so kind with what a lot of you are saying, and it means a lot to me. And the ideas that you're giving me, I will try to make content from those as well. So please keep those, please keep those coming in. So I will see you on Friday at 5 p.m. UK time for the next In Conversation with the Royal Butler. I do a live chat, so you're more than welcome to come along and have a chat with me. And we will be talking about the Morrow Castle because that is my next In Conversation. It's one of the Queen's private homes, uh, also known as her Highland Paradise. And I'll be giving you a few uh, pieces of historical information and a few insights into that beautiful castle. And then I'll be back next Wednesday for the next At Home with the Royal Butler once again at 5pm. But until then, stay safe and as always, thank you for watching.